Welcome to the most dangerous and unusual place for tourism. Do you like horror movies and weird landscapes? Do you like riddles and unexplained phenomena? Great! Then you'll definitely like the Mystery Flesh Pit. This is a wide tunnel, so large that the Eiffel Tower could fit inside it, and its depth is still unknown. But the point is that this tunnel seems to be a living creature. It's a giant monster that breathes, makes sounds, and can even move and affect your mood. If you're intrigued, come to the Permian Basin in West Texas. Here you can book a hotel with windows facing the giant meat hole, enjoy a delicious breakfast, and take amazing photos of this frightening phenomenon. But the most incredible thing is that you can go on an excursion into the depths of this monster. Don't worry, all of our employees are real professionals with extensive skills in diving into the meat pit. During this journey, you can touch the creature with your hands, see unknown beasts living inside this organism, and take a seashell from the endless labyrinth with you as a keepsake. Enjoy your unforgettable vacation, a trip to the mystery meat pit. The cost of excursions is not included in the package. You should check the prices with your tour operator. You've just heard a big fake created on Reddit by an artist named Trevor Roberts. And many people believed in it and went to West Texas to find the living pit. The scale and details of this project are incredible. The artist created brochures issued on behalf of scientists, secret organizations, geologists, and travel companies. He described the pit in detail, made beautiful models in Photoshop, wrote about the internal structure of the hole, and even now continues to keep a fake chronicle of events. It all started in the 70s. Miners were drilling a well, searching for oil, and found a strange layer of soil. Scientists, geologists, constructors, and secret organizations arrived at the site. They began large-scale excavations and discovered an unknown living organism. Biologists determined that its biological structure is similar to that of mammalians. It had layers of skin, the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. There are many dangers inside this tunnel. You can get lost if you take the wrong turn. This is not just one colossal passage. Many branches and other sections are leading into the unknown. Another danger is spasms. The organism's walls contract and shrink unpredictably. It's like how your muscles tense up when someone tickles you. There are also little weird creatures living on the walls of the pit that you can meet inside. You have to wear a protective suit to go down there. The walls of the hole can pull moisture out of you even if you don't touch them. The big pit needs to drink and eat. And it needs a lot. Until now, scientists haven't managed to determine the exact size of the pit and how deep underground it stretches. As far as we know, it may be growing and moving towards Earth's core right now. If it gets to the very center, it can cause worldwide destruction. But since the discovery and further study, people have expanded the tunnel inside the pit using technologies developed by Anodyne Deep Earth Mining Company. They built staples that artificially expanded the walls of the body. And all of it mostly to turn the pit into a tourist attraction. And in the 80s, this place became one of America's national parks. Anodyne Deep Earth Mining Company built a tunnel one mile long to send tourists there. But many who went there didn't manage to return. There are many mazes inside the pit where you can easily get lost. When the company expanded the tunnel and reinforced the walls with frames and brackets, the pit emitted a long moan, clearly audible for miles away. It felt pain and didn't like what people had been doing to it. The exact age of this superorganism is also unknown, but scientists found shells of ancient sea creatures inside. This suggests that the pit was once underwater. There was an ocean in this place about 146 million years ago. Also, scientists say this is not one organism, but a giant colony of many smaller creatures. Millions of unknown living beings adapted to life inside this monster. Perhaps once upon a time, the pit was a separate organism. Then, over millions of years, other creatures have attached themselves to its insides. 
These creatures, similar to crustaceans and beetles, have developed protection against the gastric juice of the superorganism. But the pit feeds not only on what it gets inside its stomach, it absorbs Earth's resources, oil and water. When nearing the mysterious pit, people noticed that they began to experience a strange feeling of love. They felt happy and wanted to always stay nearby. This is probably why corporations couldn't conduct more thorough experiments on this organism. They just didn't want to hurt it. This attraction worked thanks to the pheromones the pit released into the air. People from all over the world came to the pit to enjoy that love that the monster makes them feel. They organized festivals and shows there and even wrote songs about it. But despite this, some began to use this pit for selfish purposes. Companies discovered that the meat of this creature was a cheap and valuable raw material for other industries. They realized they could earn a lot on this. The creature began to be exploited. Many were afraid that it would wake up and destroy everything around, but the organism continued to remain in the ground. People drilled new tunnels, extracted material, and made excursions. And so, it continued until 2007. On that day, there was a network overload. The power transmission system inside the pit and all the drilling rigs started to send out electric currents. The giant pit began to spasm. At that moment, tourists had an excursion there. The passages began to narrow, and people got stuck there. The rescue operation started. The plan was simple. Scientists decided to throw some toxins into the pit. This was supposed to force the pit to spit people back out. They dumped the substance inside, and it worked. The pit threw out pieces of clothing and some creatures living inside it, but there were no people. Along with that, the pit released a cloud of vapor with an unpleasant smell that spread out for 50 miles. The place became toxic. All people were evacuated. Hotels closed. All construction work stopped. This U.S. national park became a forbidden place, and only people with a high admission level could enter it. Later, the pit became the object of study for secret organizations and scientists. They managed to find out that this creature had five limbs attached to the central body. Which of those are its arms, legs, and head remains unknown. After releasing the toxins, the pit fell asleep again. Sometimes it moves and makes low sounds coming from its depths, reacting to people's research. You can find gigabytes of information about it on Reddit. Trevor Roberts creates brochures, reports, and diagrams about the pit's internal tunnels. Other Reddit users have joined this work. He tries to release materials on the pit twice a month. Also, he plans to create a big album with illustrations and detailed information about his project. Fans expand the world of the mystery pit. You can find their promotional brochures from hotels located near the pit, diagrams of meat tunnels, and even a detailed description of the protective suit in which you can go on an excursion. Many see this project as a philosophical demonstration of the relationship between people and nature. Someone loves to read the details of the pit's internal structure. You can also become a part of this project and come up with something new. Prints on t-shirts and mugs with the image of a pit, for example, or some biological feature, whatever. While people are working on it, the pit continues to breathe, shrink, expand, and make mysterious sounds. The Mystery Mitt Pit is a massive colony of small living organisms, and all these creatures are people. 50 ships and 20 airplanes have gone missing. Many people have disappeared, and mysterious forces might have... Oh wait, the wrong script. This Bermuda Triangle is located in Transylvania. My bad. So, once upon a time in the heart of Transylvania, there was a mysterious place that people named the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. Look at these twisted trees and their tangled undergrowth. It seems like some evil creature may appear from behind a tree at any moment. There might even be ghosts and mysterious creatures that came from space, as stories said. The forest became so popular in the 1960s when a man was chilling there on a warm August afternoon with his girlfriend and a couple of friends. Suddenly, his girlfriend pointed at something unusual in the sky. A man came closer to the spot where she was standing and, to his surprise, saw it too. It was a weird silver disc shining in the sky. 
He quickly pulled out his camera and took four photos before the creepy object bolted away. The object was there for a mere two minutes, but the man developed his film and the picture ended up being published in local papers. Many people were skeptical about this. They claimed that those were most likely some weather balloons that looked like a spaceship because they were photographed in odd lighting. But no weather balloons, blimps, or any other objects were in the sky above the forest on that day. Spooky, huh? That's not the only campfire legend from that area. Stories say that those who ventured too deep into the murky depths of this creepy place often did not return, which is how it got its nickname in the first place. There was a shepherd who entered the forest together with his 200 sheep. They were never found again. People have also been whispering stories about a five-year-old girl who disappeared one day. She re-emerged one day, five years later, wearing the same clothes as the day she went missing. Plus, she hadn't aged a day. There are people who entered the forest and did manage to return, but with severe burns, high fever, and some other health issues they didn't have before. Some were sure that happened because the subsoil had lots of natural uranium with a high level of radioactivity. And according to others, it's not unusual that you come to this forest and feel like someone's watching you or your electronic devices just switch off. And now, here's something that's not a legend. The forest has a rich history. Some sources say it was home to the oldest settlement in Romania, dating all the way back to 6,500 BCE. Trees themselves are pretty mysterious. They grow in creepy spirals or have some unexpected zigzag patterns. Even though some scientists have come there to explore this phenomenon, they couldn't find the answer to why they're like this. It seems as if trees are twisting their limbs so they can reach out and grab you when you're not looking. And that's what's interesting. Each of these twisted trees spirals in a clockwise direction. But legends say lots of inexplicable things have happened in a specific part of the forest where you can't find trees or any other types of vegetation. It's a perfect circle called The Clearing. The perfect name for a horror movie inspired by all these stories. The soil in this area with no vegetation has been tested and no one has found any weird stuff or anomalies that could potentially stop plants from growing there. Some locals believe the forest has positive energy, which is why it's good to make a wish there. But many more people let their imagination run wild, telling stories about paranormal activities happening there, like mysterious spheres popping out in the middle of the forest or extraterrestrial lights. Either way, you and your castle can step aside, Dracula, because you're not the only scary story from Transylvania. Here's another reason you won't be able to sleep well tonight. The Isla de las Munecas, or the Island of the Dolls. In the middle of the eerie and murky waters of canals near Mexico City, there's a small island. It may look charming at first, until you realize it's home to hundreds of dolls hanging from the trees and scattered throughout the overgrown vegetation. These dolls are old and decaying. They've lost their color over time, and their once cheerful faces are now twisted into expressions of despair and horror. There is a sad story behind this disturbing place. It says the island used to be home to a reclusive man who left his family more than 50 years ago to live alone on the island. He started obsessively collecting dolls that were lost in the canal. The story says he even traded products he grew to locals to get more dolls. The man didn't clean these dolls nor show any interest in fixing them. He would just decorate his island with them regardless of the state in which he found them. Even those that looked good ended up ruined due to winds and rain. They weren't just outside. His cabin was full of these scary dolls too. Many people were terrified of this place, claiming it was cursed but others believed the dolls safeguarded the island. Moving to the suburbs of North London, where you can find the mysterious Highgate Cemetery. It's definitely not a typical resting place for the dearly departed. This cemetery has so many peculiar graves, including those of Karl Marx and Douglas Adams. But that's not what draws visitors to its gates. People come there because of the legends claiming that this place is haunted by all sorts of spooky creatures including vampires. Yup, stories about shadowy figures hovering over graves with glowing red eyes and sharp fangs never get boring. 
But this place wasn't always this creepy. It was established in the middle of the 19th century, once neglected and overgrown with crumbling monuments and vegetation that seemed to swallow up graves. But these legends became popular along with the place itself in the 1970s, after the cemetery had appeared in several horror movies. Some visitors there are even self-proclaimed vampire hunters. There's this peaceful and charming village called Pluckley, just a short drive away from London. At least that's what it seems at first sight. People whisper Pluckley could be the most haunted village in England. As you go through its winding streets, you'll come across many spots legends say are haunted. Many of them are connected to the Daring family, which held the title of Lords of the Manor for over four centuries. What gives the sense of old times is the round-topped windows on many buildings. Legend has it, hundreds of years ago, Lord Daring escaped when his enemies captured him. He jumped through one of these windows head first. In commemoration of this pretty daring act, every window in the manor house and the village was made in the same style. Even though the manor house burned down in 1951, the legacy of Lord Daring's escape lives on in the charming village of Pluckley. Some say Pluckley is surrounded by the so-called Screaming Wood. There are many legends about paranormal events that have occurred there. There are nice walking trails in this wood, but to be honest, I'd only be brave enough to hit them during the day. And how about the Crooked Forest? It's in Poland, and it consists of 400 pine trees whose trunks take a sharp 90-degree turn and then become weirdly curved, like the letter J. Someone planted them in the early 1930s, but it's still not completely clear how all these trees got the same curve. One scientist said this looked like a typical response to gravity. Plants have a special mechanism that allows them to reorient themselves when the stem is horizontal to gravity. So, these trees may have been grown this way for making boats or furniture. Of course, human imagination goes way beyond science, so many tried to explain the existence of these trees with stories of spirits that possess these trees or mysterious creatures from space that made them this way. Okay, I'm on. Let me just grab my popcorn. You've just moved to the Romanian city of Cloj-Napoca to make a startup, but you still have no idea what kind of horror will happen to you. In this city, you meet new people, and they tell you the story of the mysterious Hoya Bachu Forest located to the west of the city. They say it's the country's scariest place, and locals call it the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. After the meeting, you decide to check out of this place You drive to the edge of the forest. You go into the thicket and hear some singing of birds and the chirping of crickets. Somewhere in the distance, branches crackle and some animal howls. Some trees look ominous. Their branches look like many crooked arms. It seems to you that someone is watching you. You take a few more steps and find yourself in a small clearing. This is a perfect circle with grass, but no trees are growing here for some reason. You hear a moan from above. You look up and see a bright light within the trees. It gets brighter and brighter. And you lose consciousness. You're walking through the forest. It's already dark. You're cold, but fortunately, you can see the road ahead and your car. You come home, open the door, and look at the wall clock. This is strange. It's 10 p.m. now. You drove to the forest at 5 p.m., then took a little walk in the woods. Where did a few hours go? Then you notice something weird. There are strange red spots on your left hand. Are these burns or some rash? You go to the mirror and see that there's still a strange rash on your legs, arms, and neck. You tell your new friends about it, but they don't look surprised. They say that most legends about this forest are associated with time travel and memory lapses. Some say that they don't remember how they spent several hours in the forest and what they did there. Others talk about a strange rash on their hands. There are legends that the ghosts of lost people wander there, and some flying objects often visit this place. 
Someone said they had heard an ominous whisper in the forest and seen flying heads without bodies. The most famous legend says about a five-year-old girl who disappeared in the forest. Rescuers and locals searched for her in the woods for several weeks, but found nothing. Then, a few years later, the girl came out of the forest alive and well. But the strangest thing is that she hadn't aged at all. She remained the same five-year-old girl. After that, people began to think there was a time portal in the forest. If someone gets there, they'll find themselves in the future. It can be several hours or several years. Another myth is about a biologist who photographed the local fauna in the forest. He was taking photos of flowers and trees and caught on camera a strange object that flew in the sky. After that, people were sure that beings of extraterrestrial civilizations visited the forest. In the 15th century, a woman also disappeared there, but 500 years later, she came out of the forest completely healthy. Of course, it's unlikely that she was that woman. But a coin dated to the 1600s was found in her pocket. All these stories as well as reports about phantoms are rumors and myths. No one has yet been able to prove that the forest is really the center of paranormal activity. But if you decide to visit this place, ask local farmers who live near the forest to share some stories with you. Perhaps they'll tell you something more creepy and truthful. <sighs> but this forest is really scary. You may feel anxious and inexplicable panic. There are many videos on the internet where tourists and travelers visited this forest and talked about unpleasant excitement and strange sounds. Also, you can see something strange in the woods at any moment with your own eyes. This is a round clearing where, for some reason, trees don't grow. There's grass and plants here. The soil here is the same as in the rest of the forest. Scientists took an analysis of the ground to check this. It's still unknown why there's no trees. Some trees in the forest have a strange curved shape. It's unclear what made them grow this way, but they look creepy. You can take a walk in the forest and check how true the legends about it are. But don't be afraid, you won't be alone. The Hoya Bachu Forest is one of Romania's most popular tourist destinations. Every year, thousands of fans of mystical riddles come here to test their nerves. But even if you don't find anything mystical in the forest, you will definitely enjoy the city. Externally, it's a beautiful city with cozy European architecture. But go inside the buildings and you'll see modern stylish bars and cafes. This place also attracts many IT specialists. You've probably heard of forests where some guy decorated all the trees with sinister dolls. But all this will seem like fun toys compared to what one guy found in County Park in Huntington, New York. He was walking in the forest and came to a small clearing. There, many trees had attached photos with images of people who were missing, just a person's face with his name, date, and place of disappearance. The guy recorded this place on video and posted it on the internet. The video became popular on Reddit. Its users discovered that all these people from photos went missing in different states. None of them were found alive. After such a terrible walk, the guy called the police. Soon, they found out that one local hung these photos on trees during a Halloween party. At the request of the police, he removed all the pictures. The case was closed. Imagine you're lost in the woods. You've been walking in the forest for several hours. You tie your scarf to a tree branch and walk further along the narrow path. Half an hour later, you come to the tree with the scarf. You've never turned left or right. But why are you walking in circles then? The answer is a round forest. There's nothing mystical here, but it still attracts the attention of many tourists. The forest grows in the south of Japan. If you look at it from a bird's eye view, you'll see that trees grow in a circle, forming several layers. The closer to the center of this circle, the closer the trees are placed to each other. It resembles mysterious circular patterns in fields worldwide. But there's nothing fantastic here. No spaceships from another planet and no natural anomaly made this. But people! 
In 1973, people planted trees in the shape of 10 concentric circles. It was an experiment that showed how cedars would grow in such unusual conditions. The trees began to grow in a convex shape, symmetrically fanning out. This proved that the size of the gaps between the trees affects their growth. Initially, according to the plan, people had to cut down trees. But the place became popular among tourists. Its photo quickly spread throughout the internet, so people decided to leave it untouched. You can also visit this forest and take beautiful drone shots. So, does the mysterious Devil's Gardens in the Amazon rainforest ring any bells? Eh, don't worry. It's not some spooky phenomenon. It's the work of some tiny but mighty insects called the lemon ants. These ants inject a natural herbicide, formic acid, into any other plant that is not the tree species that they call home. By doing this, they create a space for their treehouse saplings to grow, allowing the ant colony to expand as it occupies new nesting sites in the saplings. That's some efficient gardening, if you ask me. But don't be fooled. These devil gardens are not just a bunch of boring old trees. In fact, they are botanical anomalies that grow very slowly every year, and some of them are over 800 years old. Who knew ants could create such impressive and long-lasting structures? Of course, the rainforest is still one of the most diverse ecosystems on Earth, with a remarkable diversity of plant life. But it's fascinating to see the control ants can have over their environment, creating single-species structures in such a complex ecosystem. But where does the name Devil's Garden come from? We know ants are to blame, but is there something else hiding in the Amazon rainforest? Well, picture this. You're strolling along, taking in the lush foliage, when suddenly you stumble upon a clearing. But wait, there's something strange about this patch of land. There's no vegetation, just a handful of trees standing alone in the dirt. What's going on here? It's easy to understand why people came up with this name after seeing the weird stretch of vegetation. And as humans do, they came up with quite an impressive legend to back up the story. It was said that the inhabitant of this eerie oasis was a shape-shifting evil spirit. Like me. Heh, <laughs> just kidding. This little guy may have looked like a misshapen person walking on one hoof and one human foot. But don't be fooled. He supposedly had a whole bag of tricks up his sleeve, including the ability to transform into someone you know and lead you down the path to doom. Hey, it's just a myth, but you have to admit it was quite convincing, right? Clever landscaping ants aside, there are a lot of unsolved mysteries hidden in the Amazon rainforest. Like its unusual geoglyphs, for example. Humans have been getting creative with the Earth's surface for ages. Geoglyphs are just one of the many ways we've left our mark on this planet. Basically, we take some sand or stones, move them around a bit, and voila! We've got ourselves a funky design that pops against the backdrop of the ground. A new study found that the area was home to up to 1 million people before Columbus first arrived in the New World back in 1492. That's a lot of people, and they left behind some pretty cool stuff. The Amazon rainforest is already amazing, with 1 in 10 known species in the world living there, and 1 in 5 of Earth's birds. But did you know that over the past few decades, archaeologists have discovered evidence of numerous large complex societies that may have inhabited Amazonia? It turns out that the Amazon rainforest was not just a pristine wilderness, but a hub of human activity as well. These South American geoglyphs are particularly interesting. They're these huge structures that combine square, circular, and hexagonal shapes. Archaeologists have found very few remains of habitation inside the enclosures, which suggests they were not settlements. Instead, the most likely explanation is that they were used for ceremonial gatherings. The exact function of these structures is still a mystery, though. To find out how widespread human settlements were in the Amazon, scientists focus on the basin of the upper reaches of the Tapius River, a major tributary of the Amazon. Using satellite images, they discovered 81 new archaeological sites in the Upper Tapios Basin, with a total of 104 earthworks. That means there is no gap in the network of earthworks spanning across Amazonia's southern rim. 
When researchers conducted ground surveys of 24 of these sites, they found evidence that the sites they visited were once inhabited. These sites dated from 1250 to 1500 CE and range from about 100 to 1300 feet wide. The largest were typically hexagonal fortified settlements, suggesting a certain degree of planning and uniformity in their construction. Based on the size and distributions of the earthworks, the researchers suggested that similar settlements may have extended over about 154,000 square miles of the southern rim of the Amazon, supporting a population of between 500,000 and 1 million people in late pre-Columbian times. Of course, the new study doesn't mean the Amazon rainforest was ever a teeming megalopolis. It's still mostly uncharted. So, we have no idea how pre-Columbian populations were distributed across Amazonia. But it's exciting to learn about these ancient societies and the cool things they left behind. The scientists plan to do more excavations in the Upper Tapios Basin to refine their understanding of the cultural developments there. Who knows what they'll find next? Maybe a lost city full of treasure and adventure. Also hidden in the vast habitat of the Amazon is this next quirky creature. Ever heard of the Amazon Pink River Dolphins? Unfortunately, there is still so much we don't know about them. First things first, though, let's talk about what they look like. So picture this, a small, light-colored dolphin with a pink nose and lips. Ah, they're the Barbie of dolphins! Aside from that, they look like regular dolphins with plump bodies, bulbous foreheads, skinny snouts, chubby cheeks, and small eyes. They can be found in countries like Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. They're also the only species of river dolphin found in the Amazon River. Unfortunately, these little guys are officially critically endangered species, so there are not many specimens available that scientists can study. No other name is more famous when it comes to exploring the Amazon rainforest than that of Percy Fawcett. He dedicated his life to exploring the area in search of a lost city. And not just any city, but an ancient, mysterious city that he called Z. Sounds like something straight out of an Indiana Jones movie, right? Percy was born in England in 1867 and had quite a career before he started exploring. But he didn't let his profession hold him back from following his dreams of exploring South America. In fact, he made seven expeditions to the Amazon between 1906 and 1924, each time getting closer to uncovering the secrets of Z. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how large the Amazon rainforest is. How big is it? I asked myself. It's so big that you could fit the whole of the UK and Ireland into it a whopping 17 times. That's a lot of trees and animals to navigate through. But Percy was up for the challenge. Despite his best efforts, Percy never found the lost city of Z, and sadly, he disappeared during his final expedition in 1925. But his legacy lived on through the years, inspiring many to become archaeologists and explorers themselves. In fact, a book called The Lost City of Z was written about Percy's adventures and was even made into a movie. It's not all hidden mysteries and wild nature out there. There are around a million indigenous folks living their best lives in the Amazon rainforest. That's right, they hunt, fish, farm, and even have access to Western medicine and education. But here's the kicker. Not all of these folks are keen on socializing with outsiders. And can you blame them? For years, loggers, miners, and ranchers have been, shall we say, behaving badly toward these communities. It's no wonder that some tribes have chosen to stay isolated and protect themselves from the dangers of the outside world. In fact, in 2018, Brazilian authorities were able to snap a photo of a man dubbed the indigenous man in the hole. He's the last remaining member of his tribe. But don't feel too bad for him. He's doing just fine on his own and has made it pretty clear that he's not interested in outside visitors. The authorities still leave him some seeds and tools, though, so it's not all bad news. 20 miles south of Olympia, Washington, there are strange 8 feet tall and 30 feet wide grass mounds. They cover an area of nearly one square mile. These small hills are known as the Mima Mounds, and nobody knows what created them. 
They've been haunting the dreams of geologists for nearly 200 years. Scientists have been arguing about what exactly caused these mounds to pop up all over the place. There are such theories as earthquakes, glaciers, gas vents, clay swelling, and even termites. In 1942, geologists supposed that pocket gophers could create the mounds. In 1987, the theory was tested. Small bits of metal were pushed into the mounds and monitored with the help of a metal detector. As gophers dug their burrows, the pieces of metal were pushed uphill. A computer program analyzed those results. It turned out that many generations of gophers could indeed form the mounds. It would take them over hundreds of years. But why would they push the soil up when it takes way less energy to move it behind them? That's unclear. So far, gophers' involvement is still just a theory. Scientists used to consider the Amazon rainforest a large ecosystem that's been filled with trees for millions of years. Yet when the 16-foot-wide Amazon rings were discovered, it changed all the theories. These rings proved that the area looked very different before forests started growing here. It looked like a modern savanna. Scientists took soil samples near the lakes, and the results showed that this soil didn't come from a rainforest. It was from dry lands. It may mean that people who used to live here probably had a completely different environment from what scientists thought. Geologists are still studying the rings, and they're trying to figure out what purpose they serve. Known as the Eye of the Sahara, the Rishat structure is a 30-mile-wide ring-shaped object in the middle of the desert. Rishat was initially thought to be a meteorite impact site, but now scientists believe that it was created by the erosion of a hill or mountain. It eroded away over time, but left layers of rock rings that were once a mountain. The eye is so prominent that the astronauts on board the International Space Station can see it from up there. Antarctica is the coldest, driest, windiest place on Earth. But the strangest thing about it might be located deep under the ice. Until about 60 years ago, Antarctica was considered flatland. That all changed in 1958 when the Gampertsev mountain range was discovered. It was hiding under two miles of ice. Its peaks were more than 10,000 feet tall, and the whole range stretched for 750 miles. That's one-third of the height of Mount Everest and about half the length of the Himalayas. No one has ever laid eyes on the Gambertsev Mountains. The ice hides deep valleys and steep inclines. They could show what Earth looked like millions of years ago. Lake Vashtak in East Antarctica was discovered in 2012 during drilling. Scientists found a freshwater lake untouched and unfrozen under more than two miles of ice. Researchers believe that undiscovered microorganisms and unique geochemical processes might exist in the lake. After all, it hasn't seen sunlight or been exposed to Earth's atmosphere for over 15 million years. But drilling into the lake is likely to ruin the ecosystem below and contaminate one of the last untouched places on the planet. There's a 350-foot anomaly in the Indian Ocean, known as the Indian Ocean Geoid Low (IOGL). It produces the largest distorting natural gravitational force in the world. Heavy mineral deposits, many deep-sea trenches, and magma reservoirs disturb the magnetic field in this area. Earth's gravity changes in different places around the planet. It allows researchers to look for patterns and figure out what's happening beneath the surface. Higher gravity fields usually means denser materials below and vice versa. Some scientists believe that the anomaly might be a dent in the planet's mantle that it's working its way up to the crust. The Cave of Crystals in the Mexican state of Chihuahua these caverns are filled with amazing gypsum crystals that crisscross the entire subterranean area. The caves were discovered in 2000, when workers were draining water from a zinc mine. That's when they stumbled upon these sparkling structures. The crystals were so pure and large, around 33 feet in length, and had such sharp edges that geologists couldn't date them using conventional methods. Luckily, researchers discovered 50,000-year-old bacteria samples within one of the complex constructions. It was extremely hard to work in the caves. 
There, the temperatures reached 136 degrees Fahrenheit, and the humidity was extremely high. Scientists needed special cooling equipment to get down to the cave, even though they only made short trips. Unfortunately, the company that owned the mine reflooded the cave system, preventing any further study. Around 450 miles away from Bangkok, in northeast Thailand, there's a 75 million year old rock formation. These rocks look like three whales swimming together. The beautiful design created by nature became known as Three Whales Rock. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert, but the land was changing. Gradually, sandstone got pulled apart by the movements of tectonic plates and erosion. That's how these spectacular formations were created. If you decide to explore the system of trails around Three Whales Rock, you'll find waterfalls and abundance of fauna and flora there. Locals call the Potomsky Crater in Siberia Fire Eagle's Nest. It's a gigantic 500-foot-wide and 100-foot-tall limestone mound. Nothing grows near or on top of it, and animals do their best to avoid this place. First discovered by geologists in 1949, the crater is believed to be around 500 years old. The most likely theory of its origin is a burst of steam. This could happen during a period of rapid gas expansion in the region. Scientists think that Fire Eagle's Nest might be a very rare gas volcano. Gigantic gas stockpiles might have been trapped deep underground. It could happen because of limestone forming around these storages and creating immense pressure. A sudden release of the stored gas could have formed this mammoth-sized hole in the surrounding forest. Lake Hillier in Western Australia is only 2,000 feet in length. But its color has been baffling geologists for a long time. Unlike most pink lakes in the world, Lake Hillier has a pink color all year round. Its hue isn't affected by sunlight or temperature. If you look at it from above, the lake's bright color will be in stark contrast with the surrounding blue of the Great Australian Blight. The real reason for the Hillier's unique color is still not fully understood. Many presume it has something to do with microalgae in the lake, or it might be a reaction between salt and sodium bicarbonate found in the water. The chocolate hills in the Bohol province of the Philippines are covered in lush green vegetation for the largest part of the year. But these 1,200-plus mounds turn a chocolate brown during the dry season. That's what gave them their name. Strangely, no trees or shrubs grow on them. Another mystery is how the mounds manage to develop so symmetrically. There are myths that involve giants throwing boulders at one another for days on end during a fight. Scientists believe that the 150-foot-tall mounds were created by eroding limestone that was stacked on clay. But to this day, the mystery of their formation remains unsolved. The Great Unconformity represents about 1 billion years of missing rock records. It appears in all kinds of rock formations all over the world. Scientists have been trying to find the answers to how and when this enormous amount of material could disappear. One of the most plausible theories involves glaciers. It could happen during the time known as Snowball Earth. That's when the planet was completely covered by ice. Then glaciers tore away hundreds of thousands of tons of rock and dirt. This left a gigantic gap up to a mile thick between the neighboring rock layers. Some geologists think that the record went missing when the supercontinent Rodinia formed and broke apart. Located on Yamal and Gidon peninsulas, these expansive pit holes were discovered in 2014. They seem to be still changing and evolving. The pits grow wider, and people find them more often. Of course, there's no shortage of theories about how they appeared. Suggestions range from meteorite impacts to the activity of other civilizations. But the most common explanation is that methane gas reacted to water particles after the planet's permafrost started to melt. This resulted in bubbles of methane bursting through the ice. The craters could be thousands of years old, but nobody knows for sure.